20 years ago, somebody decided to use a tote or a tub to capture nature in its essence. This method known as the mono tub has quickly become one of the most popular DIY options to cultivate mushrooms at home. While this is the most popular, it's also the most vulnerable to contamination. What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi, and today I'm going to break down all the details of the mono tub. But before I get into that, if you're interested in cultures, I have over 30 different varieties on our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi, and we ship worldwide. So the basics of a mono tub is that it's going to have a base, which is going to contain the bulk substrate, and it's going to have a lid, a removable lid that can be sealed to prevent contamination, but also a lid that allows for airflow. Another part of the mono tub is going to be a liner. So this liner will be an elastic substance like plastic that will shrink as the mycelium consumes the bulk substrate in order to prevent side pinning and maintaining an ideal environment for mushroom pinning. Some of the common features about a mono tub are going to be the holes that are filtered either with filter tape or cotton balls, which inhibits fresh air exchange. It slows down the evaporation and it prevents contaminants from entering or exiting the system. Holes should be placed in a way that natural physics takes hold in the ecosystem of the monotub. Natural convection occurs as the mycelium generates heat in the substrate. The heat then evaporates moisture within the system and it creates slow convection that will slowly evaporate moisture on the surface of the mycelium. This triggers pinning, and then naturally fruits develop from pinning. Some more specific anatomy of the monotub is that it should have a clear or transparent upper portion. This will allow for natural light to enter the system, which also triggers pinning. Some other features that may or may not be necessary for the monotub is a darkened bottom. This could prevent side pinning and focus and concentrate the fruiting in an upward direction. Some other aspects that you should consider for the monotub are the size. So as the size scales proportionately, so should the fresh air exchange and where the holes are placed. So now that I've covered some of the anatomy of the monotub, I'll demonstrate how to properly prepare your monotub, assuming that all of the substrates were prepared and sterilized correctly. After the demo, I'll get into the main reason why monotubs fail. So I'm here in front of my flow hood, and I've got a five pound bag of EP cap grain spawn which I'm going to inoculate into this Max Yield Bin Mono Tub. So the first thing that I like to do is to sterilize with 15% bleach. So this is going to eliminate any contaminants on the surface at a rougher level. And then I'm going to use my isopropyl to clear off any of that residue. So I'll go ahead and just spray 15% bleach. Um, on the interior of the mono tub. Now, as that's drying, I want to point out that I cut this strip from a five gallon or a, a garbage bag, just a normal sized garbage bag, and I'm going to use isopropyl to disinfect this. Even though it came from a garbage bag, it should be pretty clean to begin with. But one of the keys for Having a successful mono tub is to properly sterilize. So you can't over sanitize at this stage. Um, and right now, 
I'm just allowing for that bleach to dry and do its disinfecting. So I have the isopropyl on here. I'm just gonna grab a paper towel to break this clean. And it's a 70% isopropyl alcohol, so as it evaporates, it disinfects the surface by desiccating the organism. So you want to use 70%. Okay, I'll set that off to the side, and now I'm going to wipe my tub clean as that 15% bleach takes hold. So I'm making sure that I get all the crevices. Now, one thing that I want to note is that before I did this, I added some micropore tape to all the holes on the monotub. And then the max yield bin is really nice because it has a bunch of holes on the lower portion that helps create an even inset so I already added the micropore tape onto the bottom tub, and then I'm going to disinfect. So now that that bleach is kind of soaked in, I'm going to spray with my 70% isopropyl, and I'm going to wipe that surface clean again. Okay, so this whole time I'm working in front of a flow hood, and this is creating the most sterile environment possible. So now I'm gonna wipe the inside surface of this tote. And you really wanna take your time to do this because as the condensation evaporates from the surface of the bulk substrate, it can collect on the surface of the lid and then drop onto your substrate. So it's really important to sterilize properly. Okay, so I've got my surface sterilized with isopropyl and now I'm going to lay that are going to sink and then gravity will force the rest of the substrate on the bottom. So you really only need a strip of liner to keep the, uh, the substrate tucked in while it's being consumed by the mist. so that my grain spawn will get to spread in all the directions in order to create a big biomass of mycelium, which is the goal for the bottom portion of the monotope. So I'm gonna carefully spray some isopropyl on my substrate so I don't bring in contaminants. And then I'm going to spray my scissors for the same reason. Right. So what I have here is a mixture of compost and cocoa core and some vermiculite along with some brown rice and flour also known as CBG, 
and I'm gonna spread that evenly and apply a little bit of pressure so that the green spot has a good substrate to connect to. So next, I'm going to add some green spot. Okay, so uh, this is a species of Coprinus mushroom that I cloned from the wild. And it's a really delicious mushroom, but one of the problems is it has a very short shelf life. So I think it would be really cool to grow it in a mono tub so you get to enjoy it at its peak. Okay, so now I'm going to add another layer of bulk substrate to create almost like a lasagna for the grain spawn to mix it up. with another layer of green spot. with the top layer of bulk substrate. So essentially, it's a three to two ratio of bulk substrate to green spot. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that it's nice and even and that no green spot is exposed on the surface. until you are ready to harvest. Now that is the number one problem that people have in making a monotub is that they will constantly open this, spray it with water, and just introduce contamination. So this should be the last time that you close your monotub until it's ready to harvest. All right, so some things that you wanna observe during healthy development is the even distribution of the mycelium so you should start to see mycelium break the surface and spread out evenly without any discolorations like green, which could be trichoderma or other molds. And throughout the life cycle of the monotub, you should see a nice even distribution of condensation. So one of the golden signs that your mushroom uh, monotub is succeeding is that you will have dry areas underneath these holes and that indicates that there's a healthy convection. So if there's any contamination, it could create hot spots in the tub. So you might have blotchiness on the surface or if it's not developing fast enough, you won't have any condensation at all. So as long as you see this even distribution, a nice white layer, all you should have to do is observe and wait for it to start pinning.
Okay, so once you start to see pinning, you'll start to see tiny nodules form, and then you shouldn't have to do anything else except for wait. So be patient and your mushrooms will develop into full fruiting bodies, at which time it's finally appropriate to open your tub. All right, so thanks for watching this video breakdown on monotubs. I hope you learned from this tutorial. If you're interested in checking out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi, we have over 30 different cultures that we ship worldwide, including some of them that do really well in a monotub. I recommend Piapino or chestnut mushrooms. Until next time, much love.